dollars counter space the inside out matter that's what he was always trying to prove with counter space yeah so what i get with with my prime number speculation and it seems to hold up and i've got researchers that reckon <laughs> Is that sorry, I get sorry about that. The, sorry about that, guys. Uh, my Wi Fi uh, did that. I'm not sure what I missed exactly. And uh, I'll just go back because you're starting to again. So it's the, well, very so elegant. Space. My, my way of thinking is that prime numbers exist in various number sets. The integer prime numbers are positive numbers, the number one, zero, minus one, and all. The negated prime numbers. So that's the integer prime number. That gives me spatial dimensional blocks. In the real number set, every number that is transcendental, like pi e, phi, root three, whatever, anything that is a that is a number that cannot be expressed exactly in decimal form is a prime number. And they can be positive and negative, just like in the integer number set. And then so integers of those types for for real or <laughs> into the to the complex prime number set it kicks into existence there's the square root of minus one and where square root in pro is involved with a, either real prime number or a um, integer prime number you get a, a prime number set and what i get for that for free is i get fractional fractal dimension behavior instantly because the real number set gives us the fractional dimensions. The integer number set gives me the whole number dimensions. I right. don't know well, exactly what it gives me, but I, I, I'm not sure if you're using the the, uh, the mathematical definition of prime or not, or if you have a if you're, if you're meaning a primal. But I will say that I've done I've done multidimensional, including hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I've done interdimensional math, and I'm very much on the side with uh, Richard Feynman here. However, I would say that although we tend to poo-poo the extra dimensions and, and all of the fantasies of mathematicians, um, I don't know, Jason, if I would be so quick to throw out the, the multi multiverse. I would say oh. that uh, there's a lot to the theory that, that the complexity, that the, the consciousness arises out of the uh, complexity of things and complexity implies fractal and on top of that uh, if we have uh, a consciousness which is derived of the numbers the complexity uh, then that would also imply that there that there's something to the hypothesis that our universe is just a, a series of constructs wherein we being basic people being basic we have uh, base 10 understanding, base 2 understanding, and three dimensions. And then that forms our, our primary uh, view of how we see things. And in fact, our, our limitation is how we see after the asymptote of, of uh, C might be just limited to our form of universe, which there could be multiple forms of our universe, uh, what I call the uh, lateral uh, universe thinking. Now, I'm not putting. I'm not postulating string theory because I think all that matters is what's happening in our universe, anyways. However, I would well, say I wouldn't be too quick to dismiss all of it. Well, that makes the sense. issue I have with this, yeah, no, I, Ramon, I is that one of the issues I have with this process is that the definition of a prime number and a square root is a, just an arbitrary statement by mathematics, and there's no evidence whatsoever. That that definition is valid. In fact, if you go looking for prime hold number on, hold definition, on, hold on. no, this, this, is, this goes back three. to Jason's point about no, you throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Hold on, we you throwing the baby out say, with the bathwater. Slow down no, no, on the prime numbers. Does everybody here know the prime number? Definition of a prime number, number is. is arbitrarily yeah. restricted to whole counting numbers, and that further it says one is not a prime number. You go and look on the dictionary definitions of prime numbers, and you'll find there's at least three different definitions okay right? so which one are you what a prime number is and all of them are arbitrarily limiting the di the, the the number to the, the counting number set and i'm saying on what basis is that justified and because second, there is an unlimited uh, set of, there is an unlimited set of real numbers in between each each integer there is an un 
That's yeah, massive. That's that. Math and magic. Yeah, that's why you can't. Math by, by people who want to make it look complex, right? Now, I don't. The secondary problem up, is the square you... root is ambit is it is 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 determined by fiat to be a positive number. It can only be a positive number, and that's not obeying the rules of what a square I've is. I've asked you to define so, your version of primary prime numbers. That's what I've asked. Prime you. number, a prime number, is a. a arrived at by factors. In other words, I get two numbers, I multiply them together and I get a third, the, the number I care about. And for that number to be a prime number, one of the factors must be the digit one, right? Or or, or minus one, depending on which, which way you're going. And the other factor can only be the number itself. There are no other pairs of factors available to you. And when we get into... Except so it's a fraction of a keep, number and I not a number. I keep using the ones that I was trained in because that's the, that, those are the yeah. ones that are simply defined. It's sort of like I can quickly it's, define for you what well, a field is. You know. Yeah, <laughs> is, we've already been discussing for quite some considerable time that what we've been trained in is not necessarily correct. And what we have, have in mathematics... What we have in mathematics is there are calculations that are beyond a, per, a person's ability to conduct reliably and correctly. That's true. So to That's make, true. make things simple, arbitrary decisions about what's going to be this and what's going to be that have been made. It's arbitrary. I'm not sure that this is actually arbitrary because not only is it well, foundational, it's, not it only is. is it foundational, but we no, have it's, used, it's, we've built bridges and space shuttles and houses and calculated the statistics of babies and yep. you know yeah, we, we've, we've done a lot this. with the foundations yeah. and i don't even know if richard Kleinman would go as far as you're going there's a gentleman about... there's a gentleman by the name of robert edward grant he's a very esteemed mathematician he, he's done what you're talking about he took all the prime numbers and compared them to their inverse square decimal on a circle and he has a, a huge a huge theory he has mathematical yeah. um predictions for where we're going to find new constants along an ever-expanding wave. There, there's no particles in his model. Everything becomes a wave, and the wave... Well, just, post, 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 a link in the, uh, post a link in the thing I will include it in this video. Yes, but yeah, I'm all aware, aware has done this. That. I agree with it, but the thing is, he's only looking at prime numbers according to the standard definition. I'm not That's applying nice. the standard. How do you know that? He just told you about him. How do you, did you he already read that horse? Numbers. He doesn't have negative prime numbers, does he? I, I'm know. not sure. He may, he may because it is an extensive, extensive theory. I mean, it, uh, he, okay. he's written a couple books on it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, well, Robert, if you want people to read yeah, 400 yeah, pages of paper, I think you can look at this guy's work. If he has prime numbers in number sets other than the whole number counting set, and the number one, in his view, is a prime number, as it has to be the prime number zero. If those conditions are met, then his definition of a prime number must be that the prime number is prime because it has only two factors. One of those factors has to be the number one, and the other number is the number we care about. And there are no other factor pairs available. I don't know, Robert. It just seems it just seems like you want to throw out the baby that was the bathwater and then establish, you know, your theory on the numbers. And what I'm saying is that the power of numbers is going to go beyond us. In fact, if you if you follow my mems, if you follow my mems uh, latest work, I'm even proposing that numbers don't even lie on a on a count line or a timeline, however you want to say that, that they don't lie on a Euclidean plane. Like and, you. and that there's a, that there's a deether, and if the, and I found, and immediately this is interesting. The universe responded by giving me. I had to put out a, a slight addendum to 12a because immediately there was an interaction with the Bitcoin futures with the previously laid Fibonacci fam. I mean, the entire prediction, the Fibonacci fam was first set up on uh, December 17th, and then yesterday I go to work, and the 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 Bitcoin futures dip below the Bollinger band. And this was beyond the Fibonacci spiral. Maybe there's something happens beyond the second spiral. And then it dipped below the Fibonacci fan. 
And in, unless there's a literal market maker and he's you know somehow doing the same statistical analysis I am, um, I think that everything's algorithmic and automatic, which would in, in, it would imply that there is a an entire set of physics associated with the power of numbers. But I'm not saying that you that your physics is wrong. What I am saying though is maybe this other guy's could be right, and maybe. Maybe uh, this Waldron, the guy who's writing the Waldron paper, maybe his math, math physics could be right. And maybe the relative, the law of relativity being applied everywhere is causing us to mis, misunderstand that the way we see things is not necessarily the only way that there are things, um, except in the case where when we do the empirical observation and we falsify a bad idea. Does that make sense? Well... The, the comment I would say is that, that, that relativity as an explanation as to how things is go, go is just irrelevant. It's wrong and it doesn't work. <laughs> well, it's irrelevant to you. But... I'm being blunt about it. You know, relativity should be something that was consigned to rubbish. Relativity, relativity is a product of polarity and because you have you have dissonant points of view. You have dissonant points of view. Let me finish. Right, it is claimed that I'm throwing out the baby with the bathwater. I haven't turfed the whole number <laughs> set. I haven't thrown the prime number set according to mathematic to that current mathematic dic, uh, dictum okay. out at the door. Okay. It's still there, and all what I've done is definition for a prime number is for the job, and it needs to be expanded. And that is not throwing out the bath. Well, and I think for your theory, which is a, a individualized theory, correct? I mean, it's not, you haven't proven that it's well, inadequate I'm, for what I'm doing. You haven't proven it's inadequate for what they chapter, are doing. Read chapter seven in my theory that I speculated sent to you. That has gone to serious mathematicians, and I have not yet had feedback that shows to me that my conjectures are complete garbage. It's like, I don't think that they're like, complete garbage. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that Richard Feynman is probably correct, that, that, that whatever mathematicians think about the reality and whatever physicists say is impossible about reality does not mean that it's factually the empirically observable truth because of the fractal nature. We could be, we could be okay, everybody here has seen a, a uh, zoom in on the, uh, on the, tip, on the, the original uh, fractal. Okay, you could be zooming in on this part over here, and quite relative to your perspective, it looks and behaves this way. And then somebody could be zooming in over here. They see a spiral, you see a swastika. And that doesn't mean, though, you're, it's the same equation, but you're seeing different parts of the zoom. Sometimes you need to acknowledge all opposites. And, and I'll, give, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give an example here. When we went to the moon, there's a lot of uh, conspiracy theory about Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick, and footage being faked. And I'll tell you something here. I think both are true. I think we went to the moon, and I think Kubrick faked the footage. I believe two opposites. And the reason is, is because when they went up there, they took magnetic film, and they didn't realize how radioactive it was, and it all came back overexposed. And so they scrambled at the last minute. And this is something nobody talks about, that both theories are true. Well, yes. The Nixon wanted PR, and he wanted good pictures that he could shove in this, front of the public. This is just an example of, of believing well and having faith in two opposites and realizing that there are two pictures to the story. And between them, there, there may be more than two pictures to the story. And like you say, they're all just pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. And that, that's, where, that's where we're all trying to get to. Like, and uh, it's funny, R Ramon brings up the blockchain. Um, all the work that Robert Grant did with his quaternion symmetry and, and the uh, square roots on a circle uh, of prime numbers, I mean, he has now built an algorithm and he has his own crypto indeed crown sterling it's called and that's the application it's being used for at this moment in time but it's just it, it's synchronicity again when we're, we're, we're talking about these the, the quaternion symmetry and that seems to be one of its uh, biggest uh, pluses is how well it works as an algorithm for a lot of blockchain transactions 
But it also yeah, I would say on that note that 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 a, that a physical application is actually very important. And until like your prime number system is used in a physical application, it may all in fact be uh, is so called in your head. That doesn't mean it's, it's false. It's just in it, it needs to be rigorously proved. And being rigorously proved compared against a definition that goes back thousands of years. That's all yeah. I'm saying. My issue with the definition of what makes a number prime and the definition of what makes a number a square root is arbitrary and wrong. They need to be corrected so that the definition... How is it arbitrary if it's, if it's literally no. not a definition? I mean, what, two the, lock, the lockdowns in America, I don't know about other countries, but the lockdowns in America were definition. arbitrary because I'll they come, didn't have a I'll clear definition. Back. I'll come back to an arbitrary statement on square roots right now. Right. Okay. It is claimed that a square root is any two numbers that when multiplied together give me the number I want, providing that the, those numbers exist only in the prime number set. And we know for a oh, fact... You square, what are you talking about? You could square anything. I square, uh, in engineering, I squared all sorts of things. Yeah, right, okay. Let me finish. When I multiply, <laughs> but, the but I'm challenging two, your definition. <laughs> when I multiply the number minus two against the number minus two, what is the resultant number? Yeah, it's four still. So. It's four. So there's a rule change about sign immediately present. And if I multiply the number two by two, I get four. So it what what numbers when multiplied together give me four being the square root? The answer is the number two or the number minus two when they're multiplied yeah. against these two numbers. So the definition of what makes a number root is arbitrary because they add the it's condition. It's not arbitrary. It's just 180 degrees out of it's the We're talking They about add the condition that the square root of a number must be positive. And that is an arbitrary addition. Well, that, that's, pre, that's before Robert DeCincy's Vortex Algebra. So after yeah. Vortex Algebra, yeah. we, can, we can dispense with... That's just stuff you tell children in, in, in bachelor's. Uh, is in mainstream years. mathematics is arbitrary in its decisions. And it's, well, it's just un, it's incomplete. It's incomplete. I mean, they didn't know that the imaginary number was actually a 90 degree rotated uh, uh, matrix. That, that was only that was only found out less than five years ago. So what we're saying, what we're saying is we've got numbers, whole numbers. And then because you can actually produce a subtraction, we get another set of numbers that are, can be negative. So that's a, a direction. So we've got a number, then we've got number with direction, and then we've got number in the in 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 reals, which is number with fractal definition, and then we get number with rotation. Right? Uh -huh. It's not straight up number. The rotation is occurring for the into, uh, for the complex number set. So what we're getting is different sorts of numbers that are being transformed by specific methods. And well, then, yeah, because those are tools. Those are just tools. And yeah. what, I, what I've just said is that it might be a ethereal mechanics thing where the, the numbers being, the power of numbers is directly informed by the ether. And it's controlled. Well, it controls, by the way, the force. And so if well, the power of numbers controls the force... Matt, the universe doesn't go to mathematics school to figure out how it works. Well, uh, and nobody said it did, but but I am saying, I didn't say that it went to school. Uh, what I'm saying is that we only have the tools that have thus far been discovered. That's yeah. all. That's, and so it, it has just been in five years discovered, the last five years, the Vortex algebra has just been proved, and it supports the idea of the Berkman current 90 degree counter rotation idea, which is positive, negative, positive, negative. And if Whatever. those things are happening, and we know that the force requires the imaginary number to describe, then we're seeing a, a puzzle piece come together, and it's actually just more of that Sapinski triangle stuff. It's not different oh, jigsaws. It, I mean, it, oh, perhaps perhaps the Renaissance mathematicians made a mistake, please. but I don't think they made a mistake. I think they just did, like engineers and physicists, they only had part of the of the story. Veritasium did a whole video where it was about this, this very subject and the imaginary number. Right. And uh, yeah, it's a great video because somebody in in the challenge ends up discovering the best way to solve the quaternions. And th this is a, a good example of the human mind's ability to dive into the fractal and find it out. But it really, right. it, 
in terms of relative perspective, it doesn't mean that, that, that they were arbitrary. It just means that they didn't engineer it precise enough. Right, Ed. I'm going to stop it right there because what I'm going to say this is <laughs> mathematics is the language of description. It is not a language. It is not the order of the universe. You know, the language we're using now is right. a language cool. of description. It's about transforming ideas in one entity's brain or, or intelligence structure into another entity's uh, okay. understanding structure. Right. So, right, yeah. mathematics is a language of description and nothing more. The fact that we don't have our language well formed to enable us to translate our ideas about what what's us. going on scribe yeah. behavior is not a fault of the universe. It's a fault of our definition. Well, of the language. Language. There's no fault. There's no talking about faults here. And we're just talking about the, the chronology of the, development of the human the mind. Of as the, the number of times I run into the claim that the mathematics orders the universe is is endless and it is not correct. I said the mathematics. power of numbers. I didn't say that the tool called yeah. mathematics orders the universe. Yeah, mathematics is, a, is a, just another lens. Even the power of math numbers itself is well. It's only one sixth of the. It's only one sixth of the diagram. It's a description of what is possible and what can occur and how it might happen. No, and the power of numbers is a description of a domain of, of creation power. of the human mind. Right, if the mathematics we're talking about right now that I'm arguing against being correct is the production of a human mind, which is finite does not have infinite knowledge and therefore cannot get it right. Okay, so what? So we would just give up? I mean, what, what's your, what, where's, your, where's your point going? Where's your point going? Because I'm describing engineering and the development of the human mind based on the fractal revelations of the universe. Well, that's all well and good, but we've got to come clean, get clean, concise, singular definitions what? of our terms. Do you, what do you need people to like get on their knees and pray about it? I mean, what are you talking about? No, I want I want the mathematicians to get honest and say that definition for a prime number is incomplete and it needs to be changed. And this is the new definition. Well, but nobody yeah, the needs to accept the de definition of anybody else other than themselves. But the problem so the problem of the of the math community is that they've made a false god out of the wrong power. The N power is not the L or G power. It's the it's the N power. And so you're not probably not going to get that kind of uh, admission from the apostasies uh, of mysticism well. because they, they've been in, inveigled in mysticism so far. And this is actually in one of my papers that uh, the mysticism as a mems without direction could actually lead to destruction. And I think that may be partially what happened to Tesla aside from the conspiracy. But what we're That's seeing in, in, in science in general is the, is the fact that physics produced mathematics, not the other way around, and we're ignoring that definition. We're just I mean, ignoring the actual physics it's not in the field of physics. Right? And, and, and mathematics is now, you know, the, 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 the premier, premier method. You know, you can't produce a paper unless you've got a whole pages of mathematical equations that don't mean a hell of a lot, right? The mathematics is just a description of the behavior that we, we're observing. It is not actually the right. behavior that occurs. It's just another tool. Things, it's just, just like everything else. Tool. Right. So yeah. behavior. Normally, has to conform to the laws, <laughs> you know, to uh, to well, to the structures that can be defined in uh, mathematics. Right. That, that that goes back to my point about empiricism. Your 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 mental construct can be possible until empiricism says otherwise. I can imagine that I am a champion fighter or swimmer, right up into the point that I step in the ring with the champion fighter and get knocked out or or swim and drown. And so in my in my mind, I can you know see myself going. And a lot of champions do this. They will they will see themselves winning before they ever get there. Of course, only one is going to stand atop the, the Olympic podium. And only one is going to uh, be able to swim across the, the channel or whatever it takes to, to prove that they're the best swimmer. But they all visualize it until it happens. But a lot all of people champions in their own frame of reference, yeah. Right, right. There's your relativity again, is, is, the, is the point that anytime you, that the polarity creates a dissonance because the two things are out of frequency, which goes back to the law of vibration, then if you have the, 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 the two things are in a different vibration state, Trying to force them to be in the same state will result in actual destruction. 
But if they are in a resonant state, they'll produce a unity. And that unity appears, uh, in the case of the bridge, it appears a destruction to us, but it's actually the bridge is, is becoming more fluid uh, like the, the air is. It's moving from the solid state towards the, towards the fluid state. So it's, it's, its underlying structure is incapable of handling that. So it looks like destruction from us, but actually only destruction and toxicity only comes from two different vibrations being held in the same container, being trying to force them to resonate. And of course, they're not going to resonate. I think it's, that uh, uh, Robert's not going to uh, resonate with uh, the quantum uh, mechanics. <laughs> it's, but it I think that we don't, we don't add issue. a lot more music theory with our mathematics because the mathematicians are too busy looking to listen. And here's the issue. The, universe, the universal language is music. You got to think in, in energy, frequency, and vibration. Everything is making sounds, and those sounds are turned into light by our eyeballs. I mean, it's, it's a transformation going on. It's, Everything's talking to us. The universe is, is screaming at us. I mean, look at the James Webb telescope. That's, that's not an eyeball. We just put a giant ear in space to listen to infrared. And they're starting to come around, and it's, it's amazing that it's taken this long. Well, that's not amazing. Well, we didn't to me have the internet before. So, we didn't have the, internet. the issue that here is that we can't say that the universe is just harmonics, right? Um, there's more to the picture than that. Well, what yeah, we have, nobody. what we have, is a geometry in which motion occurs of constructed material, right? That is what the universe contains. It's a three-part harmonic system. harmonic states arise out of a chaotic right. state, though, and 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 and, and, and yeah, then back laminar, again. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But because you have because you have matter and motion and geometry, you will get harmonics and you will get disharmonics. You will get and 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 the thing we've got to be careful of is is claiming that what may well be an effect is the actual thing that's causing that effect. And this is why I, I will not accept that light is a wave, that matter structure is a wave, because these things are the result of material stuff moving in motion in a geometry that creates harmonics. And because that occurs, we get wave behavior. I don't think it's, the material, I, I'm, more, I'm far more wave than I am uh, material. I think, uh, well, I, th I think, uh, I think I see, I see these compression waves flying around and then. If I go and get the ocean or the aether and remove all this particle structure that's present, will I still have waves? Yes. Now, how do you get waves? There's no matter to oscillate. Where's the wave? Well, e well, equals it's it's all vibrating. A wave needs a medium. Temperature. You can't have a wave. You yeah, can't have the, a wave at media. Robert, yeah, there is ignoring, a fundamental medium. Yes, there is one. You're one ignoring what I've, what I've. You're ignoring what I've said, which is that all of the five aspects, discounting the god in the center, all the five aspects of the of the diagram, are con, are continuous. They're actually one Tao, and all the eight laws. Are also simultaneous in the in the physics in the p power. All of them are constant. It's not that resonance is happening and then not vibration and not polarity and not uh, evolution or flux. They're all happening. It's just us that has to divide it up. That's the point of the Fibonacci uh, the Fibonacci revelation is that we are the ones that are struggling with that. It's not it's not the universe struggling. It's it's just us. Yes, the universe it's, it's, knows how to be operating. We, we, we material live in the material world where it's all solid things, but really we do our thinking inside a thermoacoustic resonator. I mean, that's really where you are, is inside your mind. You can't actually interact with anything outside. Everything is a reflection through your optic and, and auditory and olfactory senses. Well, there's more to the picture than that, but I'm I'm still going to. Right. This is this is Descartes' right. philosophy. If I if I close off a person's senses, all of them completely, 
they still are able to image the universe, which means there, there, there is capacity in the human body to still interact with the universe absent any um, sensorial mechanism. You are and the universe. You're, you're so looking back at yourself. You're a reflection. We, yeah. we are as above, so below. As above, so below. We are a fractal construct in the universe. The universe creates us, and we create the universe. We're part of the universe. Yeah, but, the universe but, uh, but there is a definite, uh, you know, in mathematics, there's this thing called the collapse, uh, and that collapse happens uh, also in quantum physics, and that that collapses the definition. So you are all of these different things that you imagine you are, right up until the moment that the universe puts that to the test. A person well, can imagine themselves a saint instead of a sinner, right up until. They are forced to choose about whether they're going to sacrifice this Heisenberg's or that, uncertainty principle states that as well. Just, the uncertainty, yeah, exactly, principle, exactly. The uncertainty yeah. principle has been shown false. Now, I'm not going to argue about that By anymore. Who? By who? It's been shown false. There's papers out there already that have proved them, I'll, that I'll include them in the description. Now, now now let's, just get back, let's get back to this collapse thing. Who? has got the experimental evidence that you exist in all these states that are supposed to collapse into one. Where's the evidence for all these you, states? You, everyone Where's, has that experience. I mean, if you no, want to no, no. say, Where's, is water wet and is does light turn no, no. on and is the sky blue, Where's, you can do no. that. But I will, I'm going to tell you, people imagine a lot of things about themselves. Yeah. And then it collapses to reality when they encounter yeah, what yeah, I yeah, call yeah. kind of a not, what, I imagine, what I might imagine has no evidence in the physical observation. And Carl, it has, would, if, we're going to talk about, if we're going to talk about gravitational co uh, quantum collapse into a single outcome, we need to show that there is evidence for all those different states in the first place. And we have no evidence for that stuff. All we have is the evidence we claim is the collapsed state. Okay, well, I mean, I could throw that. I could so, say so that, you that, don't have evidence for your prime, primal theory, but, I, but uh, you yeah, know, until but, someone disproves your theory, it can exist. That's all I'm saying. All and that's in, in, the, that's in, by the way, that's a matrix algebra thing. Everything yeah. can exist inside of the matrix as yeah. long as the parentheses on the what outside tell you where it exists. All I've done in the mathematics is extend a definition and apply it to other number sets. Okay. Right. That's and all I, I've And done. I'm telling I've you, it's changed, possible now with, with the language. I changed the language of the mathematical description, but what I did not change and cannot change is the fact that the universe structure turns itself inside out, and that is simple uh, observed for, uh, empirical fact. Experimental I'm sure data. That you, oh, hold on. I'm sure that, first of all, you will have lost the audience for what you just said. But the, number two, no, I, uh, claim, not, well, it, my guts haven't come on the inside out, so you're going to have to explain to the audience what you what you mean, because otherwise right. you're straining credulity. And as you know, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Yes, that's exactly right. The light photon itself oscillates from a negative maximum to a positive maximum. What photon? As I'm going to I'm going to already challenge that. What photon? What are you talking about? Light photon. Well, that, that's not a real particle. So what are you talking about? Well, okay. Well, then you're not going to accept the fact that you can't create laser light from a wave. I didn't say any of that. I didn't say it was a wave either. No, no, I've you're never saying, said that anywhere. You're saying it's not a construction. Right? Well, I am saying it's construction. I'm saying it's a circuit. I'm saying it's a circuit construction. What what you have in a light photon construction is a circuit <laughs> that's positive and a circuit that is negative. There's a mirror combined, which is the why, why you get this photon splitting stuff that quantum goes on about. And what happens in the motion of travel of that light photon, the negative structure turns into the positive structure as the positive structure turns into the negative structure. And that's it is a continuous one way directional rotation. That's and the, if well, I, I it's probably bi-directional, right? It's probably a Birkeland current, but it, I'm, but I'm just being facetious. We, no one split open a so-called photon. Uh, they can't even, uh, when they see photons slow down, they still don't see how it's moving at the speed of light right in front of them in the in the slow motion video. It's kind of hilarious that people can't see what's right in front of them. But anyways. Good. But the thing is, 
how big is, how how much volume of physical three dimensional space or five dimensional space or whatever type of dimensional space? How big is the volume of a photon? Right. Well, the big uh, I don't think that it has a volume. I don't is think it, it has a volume. It has to have a volume. It has, right? a, it has a dimension, but not a volume. A volume would imply that it's three dimensional. It has a volume. It has to have a volume. It can't be something that interacts in three dimensions. Why does it have to have a volume? Why does it have because to have a volume? It's interacting with three dimensional structure that has a volume. Right? That's you a, can't. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's no. Hold up, hold up. Uh, just because I, I punch a guy doesn't mean he knows martial arts. So what are you yeah. what are you trying to say? Is, the thing Photon is, photon travels out as an expanding <laughs> expanding sphere of light. Uh, it tra it travels out and um, and disappears. We've never uh, our, we've our never word, caught it, it as we've never caught light it as a sphere. That's expand. still always the model. Light light, do, light does not expand in a growing volume. And if I go and punch a guy, I'm only going to hit him because he's a three dimensional object that I can interact with. <laughs> well, it's an analogy, not a literal. What so, I'm saying is that light is a circuit. The issue here and is, that you see on the wheel is right. The is the rate of induction of that oh, circuit, and it can be described as a particle or it can be described as a wave, depending on the situation. But it's neither one of those things. Clearly, that would be irrational. What and it that's is, why physics is that's why is, modern physics is rational. What it is is it's a confined flowing structure that turns itself inside out in in a, in a tuple. It's, I actually think that photon has four cons, four parts to it, but anyway, we'll just leave it at, at two, right? There are at least two parts in the in the structure. It is a confined, self-confined structure that is self-propulsing. Propulsing. Have you sliced one you open? You can't. You can't measure. There you go. So, so then, you what's the point of making mistakes? You can't go grab the basis, fundamental building block of the universe, the seed. Which has no components and split it in two, right? It, it, you've got to apply the rules of fractal mechanisms, right? A, a, a generator of this sort cannot be subcomponentized. It can build complex structure, but the generator itself is unique and cannot be broken apart, right? The aether is consistent, is made up of material that cannot be subdivided. What does this stuff look like? I have some ideas on what it is, but yeah, but uh, experimental but, evidence because earlier you were claiming that quantum is okay. rubbish, essentially earlier, like being last night. And, and Jason said very poignantly that it's been held up for a hundred years. And that is one of the key things is that it, we know that it can't be right, but it still works as far as models go. It, it hasn't held up for a hundred years because I keep having problems with the model. It keeps breaking. Right, the model. Well, just because well, you have problems doesn't mean right, that the, the world does. Well, go back. I'll just not talk about that model. Go back that 15 one. minutes, right? <laughs> People on this earth were looking out into space and they were absorbing, observing the motions of the heavens, right? And they came up with an answer as to how this stuff worked. And their solution to was the problem was that everything revolved around the earth. And then Galileo comes along with a bloody telescope, points it at Jupiter. And proves that not everything rotates around the Earth. And suddenly, I mean, you just made the you just made the statement that I've been making the entire time, which, which means oh, which proves so. also my theory about yeah. relativity because it universe. just shows that you're you're saying what I said five minutes ago, but now you're saying it in terms of Galileo, and that's know, that's exactly what I'm saying. Everybody had an imagination of what happened, and it worked as a description until the empirical collapse happened. That's that's oh. that was you're making exactly the point I just made. What I'm saying is this. We have the capacity to observe our universe. And when we write down what we think is going on, we have the capacity to get it completely wrong simply because we do not know all the factors involved or are unable to observe all the factors involved. Right? Quantum speculation is, in the main, a mind exercise. It is not based on science. The reason why quantum theology keeps breaking down is because someone does an experiment that doesn't fit the outcome expected out of the model, right? And that is the only reason for ditching the model in the first place. If your model does not produce the evidence you observe, then the model is wrong. Your understanding is wrong, not the other way around, right? The universe didn't get it wrong. 
And, and the Electric what... Universe model, it actually, and, and specifically Don Scott's model of Birkeland Currents, stands up very well when you yes. realize that the quantum is not the quantum. It's a thermoacoustic realm, and it's, oh. yeah, it's completely dependent upon temperature and vibration thermal acoustic quantum just means the smallest thing that you can count i'm i'm going to be very blunt you can't say a birkeland travels birkeland current is propagating through space because it's got acoustic and thermal characteristics it is a plasma that is moving due to electric and magnetic field effects and temperature and and the same going to be involved in transmission, right? But it's still it's particle matter moving according to a set of rules. We don't have all the what are the full set of rules that determine that behavior. It's only right. a particle on your piece of paper. When you actually try to look at it and measure it, it's a wave. The particle no. doesn't exist, cannot if be observed. Survive, if you can survive yeah. the figures of like space, I will theory. guarantee you that a plasma and into your body will evaporate you, right? Plasmas will chop you in half. They are not Holy an church. acoustical. They're not an acoustical result. They are physical particles, particles that will do damage to your body. Acoustic is pressure and density. That's it. Yeah. And trust, plasma is full of pressure and density. This is how we oh, get. The yeah, hey, how do I how do I get pressure and density if I have no matter? If you have no matter. With the energy, energy interchangeable, E equals this, mc square. You just need a little have, bit of energy. To have <laughs> ma to have pressure, you need to have matter. You can't have pressure without matter. You just need perturbations and energy transfer. You've got to have Electric matter transfer. You, you don't even need the electron. You can do it with the electric field. You could look at the entire universe as one giant electric field, dielectric. Uh, for lack of a better term, using Ken, Ken Wheeler, because it's non-polarized at the bottom. What when you get you to the bottom, you're at zero K, there's no polarization. You're sitting right at, uh, at the baseline, at zero. How do you explain the existence of an electric field without the thing that generates it? And what generates it? Why is there an electric field? What causes the electric field to be? The universe itself. That's what the universe is. What if we're inside a plasma 